NBA living. You can't teach height, the old saying goes. It's used primarily in basketball terms when describing the advantages of tall players over short ones. It's simple. Basketball is a sport where verticality rules and where height and long arms give you a significant running start. In fact, one out of five seven-footers in America played in the NBA. If you're seven feet, there's a 20% chance that you'll go pro, which are some pretty good odds. However, some people defied the odds and were successful NBA players despite the lack of height. And they are the topic of today's video. There have only been 25 players 5'9 or shorter. And here are the top 10 shortest players in NBA history. Ben, Charlie Chris, 5'8. Other than Chris, there have been two more players listed at 5'8. Willie Somerset, who played eight games for the Bullets in the 65-66 season, and Dino Martin, who believe it or not, played the forward spot. Albeit, it was for the Providence Steamrollers at the very beginning of modern basketball, 1946 to 1948 when George Mikan was considered a giant with a height of 6 feet 10 inches, which is not that much in today's NBA. Unlike Martin and Somerset, Chris's career had lasted for a while, and he played meaningful minutes for the Hawks, Clippers, and Bucks across eight seasons. Charlie Chris has a feel-good success story that all short players can aspire to achieve. Namely, it took Charlie eight years to get to the NBA, as he played in the minor CBA league before signing with the Hawks at the age of 28. He was undrafted at the 1970 NBA draft and spent seven seasons in the CBA, earning two MVPs in the process. When he got to the league, Chris was the oldest rookie and the smallest player in the entire league. He played in 418 games as an NBA pro, averaging a solid 8.5 points and 3.2 assists. Number 9. Keith Mr. Jennings, 5'7". Keith Jennings was an outstanding college basketball player playing for East Tennessee State University from 1987 to 1991. Jennings won the 1991 Francis Pomeroy Naismith Award, given to the exceptional collegiate senior six feet tall and under, and was a second-team consensus All-American. Just like Charlie Chris, Jennings was undrafted in the 1991 NBA draft. However, the Golden State Warriors signed him in 1992 due to his quickness and shooting prowess, and he spent three years in the Bay Area, averaging 6.6 .6 points and 3.7 assists in 18 minutes per game. After that, he got drafted by the Raptors in the 1995 expansion draft, but he never played in Toronto. Instead of the NBA, he went to Europe, where he played for eight seasons before retiring in 2004. He stayed in basketball and now works as a college coach for the women's program at Lees McRae College. Number 8. Monty Tao 5'7". Another 5'7 guy, Monty Tao was a point guard in the NBA for one season, playing for the Denver Nuggets in 1976-1977 and appearing in 51 games. Like Keith Jennings, Tao was an excellent college player, and he also received the Francis Pomeroy Award for Best College Player Under 6 Feet. In 1974, he also won an NCAA championship as a starting point guard for NC State University. He was a dual sport athlete, as he also played baseball and could go pro in either sport. He ultimately chose basketball despite his size or lack thereof, and applied for both NBA and ABA drafts. The Hawks selected him in the NBA and the Denver Nuggets in the ABA. He went to the Nuggets together with his college teammate David Thompson, the best college player at the time and the man who would be one of the best scorers ever, get nicknamed Skywalker and who would induct Michael Jordan into the Hall of Fame. Before he helped Thierry Michael Jordan enter the Hall and become an internet meme, David Thompson formed a formidable one-two punch with Tao, and they are credited for an invention of the alley-oop. Because dunking was illegal in college at the time, Tao lobbed the ball to Thompson near the basket, and he would softly lay it in. And what is now a pretty standard occurrence used to be revolutionary back in the 70s. Tao ended up playing two seasons for the Nuggets, first one in the ABA and then one in the NBA after the ABA-NBA merger. He scored a modest three points and two assists per game in limited minutes. But hey, that's more than decent for a 5'7 and 150-pound white man in the pros. Number 7. Wataru Watt Misaka, 5'7 Another member of the 5'7 NBA club, Wataru Watt Misaka was the first non-Caucasian player and first Asian player in the NBA. Remember that for pub quizzes. Wataru was playing for the New York Knicks during the 1947-1948 season, and he appeared at only three games and scored a grand total of seven points. However, he was important for non-sports reasons. Considering he was Japanese in the post-World War II America, 
His presence on the NBA court was of great significance for all Japanese and Asian citizens who maybe felt alienated after the war between two countries. Wataru served in the American Army during the war and said he felt torn inside. Still, after the war, he finished university and managed to win two championships for his University of Utah, where he graduated after the short stint with the Knicks. Then he got an invite to play for the Harlem Globetrotters, but declined it and chose to end his basketball chapter and get a degree in engineering. He was selected in the Utah Sports Hall of Fame in 1999. Number 6. Louis Red Klotz, 5'7". When I think of the name Red, the first thing that comes to mind is the character on that 70s show who used to say dumbass to Ashton Kutcher a lot. However, when the NBA league first formed in the 1940s, Red was a name for one special player. Louis Klotz. Of course, everybody noticed Red because he was much shorter than everybody. Red Klotz didn't leave a big mark as a player, though. Scoring 15 total points in 11 games, he played for the Baltimore Bullets in 1947 to 1948. However, he remains in the history books as the shortest player who won a title because the Bullets went all the way the year he was on the team. Other than that, Red is also known for forming the Washington Generals, the partner team of the Harlem Globetrotters with whom they toured from the 1950s onward. The Globetrotters would routinely win against the Generals in those exhibition matches, and Klotz's teams have lost more than 14,000 games with only one official victory. Red Klotz played point guard for the Generals up until 1989, when he was a whopping 68 years of age, and then he still continued to manage the team. Despite being so small in stature, he's one of the biggest ambassadors of the game of basketball. Number 5. Greg Grant Five foot seven. Like many other guys on this list, Greg Grant was looked over, literally and metaphorically, all his life. He wanted to make it as a basketball player because he was skilled and extremely fast, but it looked like it wasn't in the cards, and he got a job at the fish market in high school. However, after they saw him play in the playgrounds of New Jersey, scouts of Trenton State College offered him a place on their team. It was the best thing that ever happened to Grant. And during his four-year college career, he led the Division III in scoring, which was good enough to get him drafted in the NBA with the 52nd pick. He played for six different teams in nine years in the NBA, and he averaged 2.8 points and 2.7 assists. In 2009, he issued an autobiography called 94 Feet and Rising, the journey of Greg Grant to the NBA and beyond. We didn't read the book, but if you're under six feet and want to play pro basketball, it might be worth it to give it a look. Number 4. Anthony Spud Webb, five foot seven. The most famous five foot seven guy on the list is definitely Spud Webb. Unlike some of the other guys who only played for a short while, Spud made his mark in the league. He played for four teams in 814 games in 13 years, but the fans will remember him most during his days as an Atlanta Hawk. It was in the Hawks jersey that he made the impossible feat. In the 1986 slam dunk contest, he did not only participate, but won the event against his teammate, Dominique Wilkins, a 6-foot, 7-inch high-flying forward. Of course, Webb was the shortest player ever to win the slam dunk contest. The world was enamored with Spud at the time, and he quickly became one of the most recognizable players in the NBA. He played until 1998 and ended his career with averages of 9.9 .9 points and 5.3 assists, which are some of the best little guy numbers ever. Number 3. Melvin Hirsch, 5'6". Mel Hirsch was at his time the shortest player to ever lace him up on the NBA hardwood. A standout college player, he was known for his grit and tenacity, which is a common denominator for almost all little guys on this list. When you're small in the game of giants, you have to go extra hard to stay on the court. Mel did precisely that and scored a contract with the Boston Celtics in the 1946 to 1947 season. He only appeared in 13 games for the Celtics that season, scoring 19 points total in the league. Number 2. Earl Boykins, 5'5". Five five. While many of the players on the list were playing at the early stages of the NBA, Earl Boykins is still in the recent memory of NBA fans worldwide. Born in Cleveland in 1976, Boykins was one of the best high school players in the state of Ohio in the 90s. However, he was not a highly touted recruit. You guessed it, because of his height. Only Eastern Michigan University had offered him a scholarship, and Boykins spent four years there. As a senior, Boykins was second in the NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Championship in scoring. 
with an average of 26.8 points per game. He still holds the record for assists at EMU. When he declared for the 1998 NBA draft, nobody picked him. He was only able to sign short-term contracts with teams and played a total of 58 games in the next three seasons, usually playing garbage time minutes. The Golden State Warriors were his fifth NBA team and the first one that played him serious minutes and that allowed him to sign his first long-term deal when he signed with the Nuggets in the 2003-2004 season. He averaged 12 points and four assists in his time in Denver, which were his most productive years. He retired in 2012 with averages of 8.9 points and two assists. Just like some of the other guys on this list, he made memorable photos when standing next to giants of the game, most notably when he played against Yao Ming, seven foot six, and Shaq, seven foot one. Shaq was almost three times the weight of Boykins, as he couldn't put more than 135 pounds on his 5'5 frame. Number one, Tyrone Muggsy Bogues, five foot three. The shortest player to ever play in the NBA, and probably the best player on this list, is Tyrone Bogues, commonly known as Muggsy. Muggsy was the shortest, the peskiest, most durable, most talented, and most famous of all the players mentioned here. His growth spurt stopping at Kevin Hardish 5 foot 3 inches. Tyrone Bogues is the smallest person in most rooms. However, even from early days at playgrounds, Tyrone knew that he had to fight for everything and that's how he got the nickname Muggsy. He got so good at defense and stealing the ball due to his quickness, low center of gravity, and hustler's mentality that the other players thought he was mugging them all the time. Muggsy played four years at the famed Wake Forest University and ended up his college career as the ACC Conference all-time leader in steals and assists, which got him an invite to represent the USA in the World Cup in 1986, where the Americans won the gold medal. Despite his height, he was picked relatively high in the 1987 NBA draft. He went 12th to the Bullets, even though they didn't play him as much. Bogues later said that he felt he was picked there for marketing reasons. If you didn't know, at that time, the Bullets had the tallest player to ever play and the shortest one. Bogues and Maynute Bull, with 28 inches, 71 centimeters difference between them. They were such a media attraction everywhere they went and had numerous magazine covers together most notably the one with three basketballs of height difference between them. However, Muggsy was unhappy in DC and managed to get traded to Charlotte. He ended up playing 10 years for the Hornets, and he became a household name there, alongside Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning. Muggsy left a big mark in Charlotte and is one of the most popular players in Hornets history. He is the Hornets career leader in minutes played, 19,768, assists, 5,557, and steals. 1067. He was a popular figure outside of basketball too, with appearances on various shows and movies, most notably alongside Michael Jordan in Space Jam. After retirement from basketball in 2001, he became a coach and is currently the head coach of the United Faith Christian Academy Boys High School basketball team in Charlotte. His autobiography, In the Land of Giants, describes his life from growing up in tough neighborhoods to NBA success. <laughs> NBA Living. Join the team.